Well, good afternoon. Um, as Michael said, my name is Wayne Borum, and I'm the Information Systems Manager at the Oregon National Primate Research Center. At ONPRC, we use LabKey for a variety of different purposes, but our primary use is our implementation of the Electronic Health Records module. Uh, we've talked about custom modules throughout the morning, and this is one of those custom modules. I'll try, today, I'll try to give you an overview of how we've deployed the EHR module, and I'll try to get through it before nap time. The Oregon National Primate Research Center is one of seven national primate research centers established as a national scientific resource to provide animals, expertise, as well as specialized facilities and equipment to scientists conducting research with non-human primates, or NHPs. Over 2,000 investigators conduct approximately 1,000 investigations annually at the NPRCs. At the Oregon Center, research is conducted using five non-human primate species, as well as a number of other small lab animals. This shows the breakdown of our current colony. The animals in this table are all individually identified, and each has its own health record. The small lab animals, mainly rats and mice, are only counted for tracking and billing purposes and are not individually identified. Our database contains health records and husbandry data for nearly 37,000 animals of 69 different species going back to the opening of the Primate Center in 1962. Before our lab key implementation, we used a legacy electronic health system called IRIS. IRIS was designed and built beginning in 1998 to replace an older mini computer based system that was written in COBOL that was not Y2K compliant. You, some of you might remember Y2K compliant. The IRIS system was a client server application built with Visual Basic and it used Microsoft SQL Server version 6.5 for the database backend. This new network system went live on January 1st, 2000, and was a significant improvement over the previous animal record system. However, by 2011, it was clear that it needed to be replaced. It was difficult and slow to add new features. The reporting out of the system was all custom reports using Microsoft reporting services, and the ability for the end users to do ad hoc searches on their own was extremely limited. But the major drawback was the fact that since it was built using Microsoft tools, it did not play well with non-Microsoft platforms. As I'm sure many of you are aware, Apple products are a favorite in the research community. And as more and more investigators needed to access the Animal Records database, it was, obviously, it was obvious that we needed to move the application to a web-based system um, of some kind that would work with any computer that could run a web browser. The search for the replacement led us to the EHR module that had been developed at the Wisconsin National Primate Research Center using LabKey Server. It had many of the features we were looking for, and because it was built on an open source platform, we could continue development and add functionality that we required. For our implementation, it was decided to call it Primate Records and Information Management, or PRIME. A handy way to view our, the overall PRIME project is to visualize a circle. Our initial implementation began rolling out in June 2013 and focused primarily on the animal health record and the finance and billing components of the system although some labs and cores were also represented. Ongoing development has focused on extending the functionality to more labs and cores, as well as augmenting the EHR functionality to include small lab animal ordering, an NHP animal planning process for projects and breeding groups, and several other enhancements that the user community has identified. Prime is based on LabKey Server, which was designed to provide a powerful, easy to use, web-based platform for managing laboratory and analysis data. It is a way to easily create files, folders, and workbooks, and to connect data and files together. It uses a number of built-in tools for comparing, filtering, and reporting on that data. And we are using LabKey Server's built-in features to facilitate collaboration between multiple scientists and labs. Based on this set of tools, we have augmented the electronic health record development at the Wisconsin Center to better beat out, meet our business needs. 
Prime was developed with a view towards improving animal health and supporting research with a single service data management solution for labs as well as animal records. As with any computerized system, a primary goal must be to improve the accuracy of the data and achieve gains in productivity. We are striving to, for productivity gains for the animal care technicians, data entry users, veterinarians, lab technicians, scientists, and administrative personnel who all have a stake in the success of the Primate Center as a whole. We all know that data is only useful if you can get it back in usable ways. That requires simple retrieval methods and flexible search capabilities, and LabKey provides both. Compliance is a major requirement for all primate centers, and we're no exception. The data that is being collected is used to support our compliance requirements in a variety of ways, and more on that later. Finally, Prime has to provide timely, accurate, transparent information for administrative use, including cost recovery and billing. Now let's take a look at the application and its functionality. Here's the front page of Prime. From here, one can access all the power of the Prime application. We have developed a variety of training materials to assist users, new and old alike, in the use of the system. From simple descriptive instructions to a library of training videos, we want users to feel comfortable using the system and to know they have some place to look when they have questions. The large buttons on the bottom of the screen lead to the major sections of the application. The admin button takes you to the compliance, finance, and information systems areas. EHR provides access to the animal health records, both for data entry and retrieval. The labs button provides access to folders for the use of individual labs. Cores and resources are basically labs or groups that provide services to other labs and researchers. Both the labs and cores and resources areas use standard lab key features to provide data analysis and data management support. A major feature here is that the animal ID in the basic grid displays can easily be linked directly to the animal's health records as a drill down. The final button is for the small lab animal section and provides access to the SLA online purchase module as well as data entry and reporting of animal census information. Let's start first with some technical details. The EHR module uses the LabKey study for core animal data, and there are about 50 data sets involved. The core EHR module provides a central repository for basic animal information, births, deaths, weights, housings, etc., and is available for all of the primate centers to use. Then we each have our own EHR branch. Ours is called ONPRC underscore EHR for customizing the system to meet our differing business needs. We have created several additional modules to address outs needs outside of the animal health records, such as finance and small lab animals. We use ETLs to extract data from some other databases. For example, we retrieve valid account number information uh, from one source at Oregon Health Sciences University, our host institution, and protocol information for project definitions and compliance data from another database. Our lab laboratory information system has two-way communication with Prime as well. So orders can be placed in Prime, sent to the LIS and processed, then the results are fed back to Prime and included in the appropriate animals record for storage and reporting. There are many custom SQL queries in all of the modules to facilitate special data retrievals. Finally, we use LabKey APIs to communicate with Mathematica and other external scripts. The keys to our castle resides in the wealth of animal health data that is available in the system. This data is used for maintaining a vibrant, healthy colony, as well as providing valuable information to support our ongoing and future research activities. These next few slides give you an idea of the breadth of data that is collected and maintained in Prime. Colony management data entry covers a wide range of subjects from birth and departure data to animal matings and pregnancies to research project assignments. Recording surgeries, research procedures, and requests for services are also important data elements that are collected. 
Prime is the repository for all the health records maintained at the center. The records cover all aspects of the animal care process and data entry is simplified by use of standardized entry templates that minimize the amount of data entry that has to be repeatedly entered by pre-populating many data fields. Many processes also provide for bulk data loads from spreadsheets and other types of data files. We're also capturing more and more data from laboratory equipment directly into the database. Our clinical lab LIS is a good example of this. Our orders are entered into our LIS, barcodes are printed and placed on the proper tubes, samples are drawn and sent to the clinical pathology lab for analysis. When the analysis is complete, the data is automatically entered into the LIS database and is then passed on to Prime for storage and reporting. A major feature of Prime is the capability for creating alerts and notifications. These are processes that run behind the scenes and are used to validate data and locate situations that require follow-up and intervention. Users can subscribe to these alerts and receive an email either on a regular basis or only when an important situation is identified. A main advantage of Prime is the ease with which the data can be retrieved. With the click of a button, we have access to useful information about the colony as a whole that can be used to inform management decisions on a variety of topics. Let's take a look at some of the ways we can view animal colony data. The colony overview provides a current snapshot of the NHP colony. The data can be sliced several ways, and the items shown in blue allow drill down for more specific information about that subject. The clinical summary drill downs provide a quick and easy way to find out which animals are associated with each of the master problems listed. The housing summary is a good example of how the drill downs can provide more and more detailed information as you dig deeper and deeper. We begin with a high level summary showing the animal counts by building. Then we click on a building. When we click on a building, it takes us to the summary report of rooms located in that building. Click on a room and we get the actual cage layout of the room, including cage sizes and divider types, which animals are located in which rooms, along with their weights. It's pretty neat. Billing is a very important component of the system. Following implementation of our billing module, we were able to increase revenue without increasing prices, simply because of the consistency in billing practices that the system enforced. Charges that are automatically computed from the animal health data has greatly reduced the amount of billing data that must be manually entered. The system has provisions for three standard rates based on the type of project, internal, collaborative, or contract, as well as the ability to set special rates on a per project basis. These are the kinds of charges that are currently automatically generated, and we're adding new charge types as we identify appropriate candidates. With the wide variety of billable items we need to process, we have created a way to manually enter charges into the system. This allows us to better manage the diverse kinds of recoverable charges that different departments need to bill. Our goal is to have all billing transactions enter Prime on their way to the OHSU accounting system. With all our transactions running through Prime, we can create trial billing runs to get a preview of what charges will be created and correct errors before the billing is actually done. Investigators and staff have access to their own billing information. Previously billed items can be reviewed whenever needed. Working with their financial analyst, they can review anticipated billing charges and have the opportunity to verify that the correct charges will be posted to their accounts, again, prior to the actual billing run. The rate tables that are used for billing calculations are also utilized to generate the rate sheets that are available to researchers for their use in completing their grant submissions. Financial alerts are delivered to the business office daily, so any potential problems with the billing can be identified and are again remedied prior to the billing run. This saves many hours per month in time that used to be spent correcting errors. As new situations are identified, new alerts are created to warn the appropriate individuals to take corrective action. We are making extensive use of the um, LabKey issue tracking system. Um, we have three separate issue trackers. Um, if a user sends us an email requesting service, 
we will open a ticket for them and encourage them to use the issue tracker next time. This allows for easy searching of entries, the ability to link tickets together, as well as automatic emails whenever a ticket is updated. Our practice is that virtually everything we do is logged in the issue tracking system. The EHR issue tracker can be used by anyone who has access to the system to report problems or bugs, request new features or changes in user access, etc. For feature requests, we use columns in the ticket for the user groups to prioritize their requests. This has been a major help in maintaining transparency and managing our workflow. The finance issue tracker access is limited to the finance group. They use their issue tracker to record any changes to the billing data that have been made. Any data corrections or special situations are all entered as an issue. We recently had an internal audit of our finance processing and the auditors loved the fact that any unusual data conditions were detailed in an issue ticket. The IS issue tracker is available only to the IS group. We use it to link to um, EHR and finance tickets and keep notes on our discussions about how we might approach problems so that they are there available for us and do not confuse our users with our ramblings. The use of grids for ad hoc reporting has been a major benefit in implementing the LabKey solution. Most users pick up on how to use the grids and customize views quickly. The columns in the grid can be sorted and filtered as needed. The display begins with a default view, and other views can be created and saved for later use. Also, grid display data can easily be exported to Excel or to files of other formats. The more searching the users can do themselves, the happier they are, and also frees us up for other things. Another benefit of the new system has data, has in, is improved data consistency. Being able to validate data as it is entered is an important feature of the system and coupling that with a system of alerts and notifications to catch other kinds of problems goes a long way in developing confidence in the veracity of the data. Being able to use group and individual permissions to finally focus user access really helps control who can see and do what and provides ways to manage those special case access requirements. Providing the investigators direct access to their financial data has allowed us to stop generating billing reports that were sent out and nearly never read. Instead, each investigator can view all the billing transactions for his or her projects online at any time. We have identified some lessons learned that others may find helpful. Our initial attempt at defining user permissions took an organizational approach. Rights were tied to what part of the organization the user belonged to and what their level was in that organizational group. We have since found that looking at access rights from a functional perspective provides a better method for users to have the right, the enough rights to do their job without giving them too much access. We've also discovered that initially we created more access level groups than we really needed. I would suggest that anyone designing a group level access scheme start with as few groups as possible and only add them when it's absolutely necessary. Performance can be a major problem. To help with the performance challenges, keep queries as simple as possible and do everything you can to optimize how they run. Another important and difficult to accomplish item is to document the system as you go. You have probably all seen a sign on the bathroom wall saying the job isn't finished until the paperwork is done. Well, it's far easier to keep operational notes and create business rules when you're working on the code than it is to go back later and try to figure out what you did and why. We're continually working on, published, on the published di uh, business rules that we make them available to the user community and try to take the opportunity to backfill any missing documentation whenever a block of code has to be changed. I won't pretend that we always do this, but we work hard to remind each other to keep up on our system documentation. We've been using SSRS, that's Microsoft SQL Server's reporting services, for any reporting needs that cannot be met using grids, and we have found that it is difficult to use in the lab key environment. We're currently exploring other reporting technologies to find that one that will suit our needs better. Our current LIS will no longer be supported as of 1231, 2018. 
so we're in the process of finding a suitable replacement for it. There are a variety of options available, so it is an exercise in finding the best fit, both technically and financially. Real-time data entry has been a dream for us for a very long time. The technology is available, but we haven't yet found a combination of hardware and entry form format that is acceptable to our users. We will get there, we're just not there yet. LabKey, the company, has been instrumental in providing a forum and sponsoring a conference call every other month among all the primate centers. Five of the seven primate centers have either implemented the LabKey EHR module or are in the process of doing so. The other two centers are participating in the collaborative calls and, and are exploring ways to use LabKey to help augment their current systems. Scientific collaboration is an important way to leverage scientific discoveries, and this kind of support fosters more and better collaboration between the national primate research centers. That pretty much finishes what I had to say. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And I've included my email address on the slides. Do not hesitate to contact me if I can be of any assistance.